Finding seller leads is probably the hardest thing in this industry. Uh, everybody wants this golden goose. Everybody wants like, uh, I'm picturing Gollum saying my precious, my precious. That's 100% what seller leads are in this industry. And when you have the listing, you tend to win as a realtor. And my man, Ryan Young out of Cleveland, Ohio is cracking this code actively as we speak. He's a guy who's in the game selling houses. His, his team sells four or 500 homes a year. And so they're obviously using this and exercising it. Ryan's gone on to figure out how in the world can an average Joe Schmo like you and like me use <laughs> his program and his systems to gain a ton of seller leads. And I am here to learn just like the rest of you, because I am fangirling pretty hard. Ryan, my man, uh, my favorite ginger from another mister. Uh, so good to have you here, buddy. How's life? I'm really excited to be here on that intro. It just makes me smile. So I'm, uh, I'm stoked for the next hour. And, you know, obviously we've, uh, we, we go back a while now and it's cool to see both of our continued growth and, uh, to be, you know, sitting here sharing this time with you to me means a lot. So I'm very excited. Uh, when we, uh, Gang, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint a picture of of uh, two of my favorite memories of Ryan to help you understand. I know that. where you're going with uh, this. Uh, do you know both? Well, I know the first one. I think we'll see. Okay. Well, uh, my first favorite memory is, is Hatch Coaching started in 2016, and it started by me inviting uh, my friends who were suckers, who I'm like, hey, you want to come to Fargo and do like this uh, development thing? And about 20 of them said yes. And so Ryan was one of the 20 people. He was one of the first people that bet on hatch coaching and came to Fargo, showed up in this uh, three piece suit was like <laughs> super formal and uh, just uh, really, really fun to get connected with him there. We did a, a competition or a challenge where Ryan had to do pushups. And so he was doing pushups in his three piece suit. Now he doesn't wear anything with a collar. It's this unbelievable transformation <laughs> of homelessness as he finds more success. <laughs> How really the great. times have changed. Uh, the second experience is we were in San Diego, California. Uh, we were there for a rate event, radio and television experts. That's how we're connected in the first place. You USA. We... <laughs> USA. <laughs> Uh, we, we were doing this, uh, cooking competition at this, uh, at this school, that's this cooking school. And it was so fun. Ryan has a background as a chef is, is, uh, a, a wonderful culinary experience, uh, is this guy and we're just having fun and laughing. And, and somehow it turned into this meat throwing contest, uh, where I was a center of attention and, uh, I managed to catch a discus of meat in my mouth that, uh, one, <laughs> people's respect and attention. So if you were wondering, am I a big deal, Eric Hatch? Yeah, Eric Hatch, you're a big deal because uh, you can gobble up flown meat like the best of them. So pretty great. Well, and just really quick to the first Hatch, uh, it wasn't even a summit. It was more of a mastermind. That was your old building. And I remember what the uh, what what the, the whole concept behind the pushups were, was they said, you know, Robbie said, Ryan, how many push-ups can you do? And I was like, I don't know, maybe 30 push-ups, 40 push, whatever it was. And he's like, all right, we want you to do those push-ups. And everyone started cheering me on while I was doing them. And I ended up doing like 50 push-ups or something. And it was just the, 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 the point of synergy of how, and, you know, the encouragement and, and how that just are, we have such mental limitations and how we can do so much more. Now, what you guys didn't see was me crying for the next four days because <laughs> <laughs> I thought my chest was going to fall off, but, uh, you know, in front of everyone, I was, I was the hero for a yeah. good seven minutes or so. So, yeah, you and I have different memories. I remember, uh, you did like 12 push-ups. but either way, <laughs> Look, I tell my kids, still stand. your dad, <laughs> you should have seen him back in his prime in 2016 in Fargo. That's right. <laughs> so. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, walking, walking uphill both ways. And, and Ryan, you've gone on your team in Cleveland, uh, I love the fact that you get so much out of so few. Uh, it, it's one of the things that you and I both lean to is we don't want a hundred agents that are each doing seven or eight deals a year. We want eight agents that are doing a hundred deals each, right? We want to give people really big lives. And that's, I think the framework for how you created fellows, you wanted to help give people big lives uh, and, and, and gang understand this is not a commercial for fellow today, uh, but it's the experience that Ryan has taken and, and how he's mastered this game and figuring out how to take your database and win bigly. So, uh, Ryan, I want to shut up. I want you to share with us uh, how this all came to be, because most things uh, that entrepreneurs create are built out of pain. Yeah, 
what pain were you experiencing? So um, I'm going to kind of give the, uh, you know, just the, uh, the, the, the elevator kind of pitch story of how we got to where we were. Um, I had aspirations to build a big real estate team, surrounded myself with these agents like Eric and others that were building these big teams. And a lot of them joined this group called Rate, Radio and Television Experts. And so I was like, look, if they're all doing it, I want to do it too, right? And I want to be like these guys. So I called up the owner of it, Matt Wagner, and he said, if you want to join Rate, you got you got to make a very strong, unique selling proposition, and you got to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And if you want to start let, marketing, let, let's pause there. USP, yeah. you're going to USP. hear this idea yeah. over and over again, and I don't think most people have USPs, Ryan. Oh, if you don't, um, it is very hard to differentiate yourself uh, from the however many thousands of agents in your market, right? Um, so, you know, he said, you need some sort of USP. What differentiates you when they hear your radio ad, if you're going to invest this type of money, you need to really have something with a hook, you know, a call to action that really like catches their attention. He said, the majority of our clients do this guaranteed sale program. This was 2016, something like that, 2015. And me, I had no interest. I thought it was cheesy. I didn't want to buy houses. My job was to list houses, sell houses, stuff like that. Um, but he finally showed me the value of it and it kind of walked me through some of the models that people were doing. So I was like, well, look, if all these big agents are doing it, I'll do it too. I didn't really have a plan when we first started it, but I just kind of said, I'll figure it out as we go. Mm -hmm. So we go on radio, we start, you know, seeing some influx of opportunities. We're having some success. And then a few years later, I get a call from a gentleman who says, Ryan, I want you to buy my mother's house. I live in Alaska. Um, I just, I want you to buy it. I hear your radio ads. I stream, we're from Cleveland. I stream Cleveland radio. And I said, you know, I, I don't buy houses unless that's not the way the program works. It's if we can't sell it, we'll buy it. Mm -hmm. But the way we structured the program was really with the intention of not having to buy any houses. And I say that because he kept pushing and saying, just buy it, make me an offer, make me an offer. And I kept saying to him like, I don't want to buy it. Let me sell it. We can net you more money. And he kept saying, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. so finally, I said, here, I'll make you an offer, but in full transparency, we can help you sell it for much more money on market. He said, I'll take it. And so like, all of a sudden I started like, I'm just so confused. Like I'm so yeah. conditioned to like, I go on listing appointments to say how I can sell your house for the most amount of money. All of our messaging is we sell homes for more money than everyone else. And he said, I'll take it. So I started to just learn kind of the, the, the psychology of every seller is not the same and every motivation and intent of every seller is not the same. And we started realizing that there are some people out there that just want quick sales. And so we kind of moved it over to the young team instant offer. And I, I, I want to pause for just a moment here, Ryan. You and I have been doing this uh, idea of buying homes now for the last probably four or five years. And one of the, yeah. one of the leaders in it is our buddy, Nick Shivers out of Portland, Oregon. The and best. Nick, I remember Nick messaged me and he's like, Hatch, I'm buying houses from people. And I'm like, why would you do that? We have a, we have a fiduciary responsibility to serve our clients. And our mindset is we got to get these clients as much money as possible in every single time. Otherwise we're taking advantage of them. Correct. Well, I think you're taking advantage of somebody if you mislead them. Correct. It, but if, 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 if you're painting options and opportunities, Nick said, listen, I have people who, regardless of the price that I tell them, they just need to be done. Like your, your guy in Alaska, he just needed to be done with the, with the house, with the emotional baggage and Zillow, when they were really pushing out Zillow offers, they gave, they did a study and they found out that the number one and number two stressors that sellers go through have nothing to do with money. Money's number three, number yeah. one, it, number one is uncertainty. And number two are interruptions. Those are the things that cause the most stress for our home sellers. We as realtors, I, I think I think of it like this, Ryan. Like I'm a I'm a golfer, not a great one, but I'm a golfer. And if I go to the golf course and I only have uh my driver, can I really play a great round of golf? Right, for sure. And I, I like I can't. I can't. Uh, you have to have a bag of things that are providing options for your sellers. And you went on then to uh, do the instant offer. Sh share that. Uh, that yeah. Series. Well, and, and, and really quick to tie back to that seller. So, you know, after the sale, I asked him, I'm like, Dante, I, I, we could have sold the house for more money. I'm going to sell this house for more money. And he said, Ryan, 
my mother is in assisted living and every dollar of proceeds of the sales goes towards Medicaid. And so it actually costs me money every month for her to be in assisted living until this asset is liquid, liquidated from her portfolio, right? Or from her, it's the last thing standing. He's like, I would have had to fly back to Cleveland. I would have had to clean up the house. I would have had to get it ready while I'm still spending for her to be in um, assisted living. And he's like, so you actually saved me money by buying the property. And so it was kind of this, like, once again, this like eye opener, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we started doing the Young Team Instant Offer and we started having hand rates with people saying like, I, I want the Instant Offer. Let me see what it is. My situation is different than everyone else, which then made us realize like, wait, there's demand for this. There's product market fit. So we but decided to- Ryan, Ryan here's, here's the bells that are going off for people who are watching right now is why in the world would somebody sell to an investor in this market right now as it sits, uh, uh, as we record, this is the 21st of February, 2023. And most people are in very, very aggressive sellers markets. Sure. Why would, why well, in the world would, would a seller do that? What happens if you have an opportunity to get a great deal on a house that you want to purchase? What happens if you have an opportunity to buy your dream home, right? But the only thing that is holding you uh, or standing in the way of you doing that is your current home, right? So it's like, and I, what if you could take a job and relocate and not have to worry about it? What if you could dot, 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 right? Like there's so many examples of people that still choose um, the speed and convenience and certainty versus the net dollar. And I think it's our responsibility when you say fiduciary, I think our true fiduciary is to what their goals are, not to what we are conditioned to think their goals are, which is sell the home for the most amount of money. Now, I'd say 90 plus percent of our sellers, their goals are to sell their home for the most amount of money. So we create a strategy and a plan to help them accomplish that, right? Mm. However, not everyone is in the same boat is I'm trying to net the most amount of money. Some people lose money by trying to sell the most amount of money, right? Some people miss the market by the time they get their house market ready. Some people end up spending more money trying to get their house market ready versus what they thought the return on investment on those improvements, repairs, stuff like that. Some people don't have the resources. Some people don't have, whether it's, I know you guys offer a great program or at least you did where it's like, we'll so participate do, yeah. in the, the renovation with you. That's a great option, right? and works really well to complement the instant offer and the traditional approach. Mm -hmm. And so now you're offering them essentially this menu of options that says, what's your pain point and how can we help you solve that? And I think that's where the fiduciary is. And I think we're misguided as agents when we all go through real estate school of not focusing on what the seller's option is, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so Ryan, you, you start doing the instant offer. You said 90% of people, uh, they're, they're not going to take the offer, but I think a lot of people are curious of what, what the yeah. place will go for. Right. Uh, a, a Zestimate is common language for us. And, and HomeBot has uh, some artificial intelligence that'll give you kind of a price on your house. And you've taken these kind of ideas now and you've brought them to life, right? Yeah. Well, and here's, this is where the, the story kind of takes place to where we are now. So we see people raising their hand into an offer. All of a sudden I had a past client that was in the tech space. And I said, I was talking to him about this. And this was like when Open Door and OfferPad and all of them were starting to see some traction. This was like 2019. And I said, look, like we have people that are kind of coming at us really fast saying, what's the offer, right? They hear our messaging, what's the offer? I said, let's put some technology behind this. And there, so, there was always there was always a delay. Yes, Ryan? For sure. Somebody said, what is the offer? Awesome. And it was, there's a lot of time to come to your house and to walk yeah, through and to get an it idea. It was my agent who would come, go to their house and then they would take pictures and then they would send it to us. And it would take me three days to respond because I was busy. And then, you know, it's just one of, it was a bad consumer experience, right? And we weren't yeah. living up to our message. So we said, let's put technology behind it. So we built this platform direct to consumer called Flash House. And it was also a nice way. The reason why we did this was... We wanted to insulate the young team. If they didn't like what the instant offer was, well, it was Flash House that was offering, not the young team. The young team was focusing on more of that net dollar, but we have the option of instant offer by going to our partner Flash House. If you don't like the offer, we could always go back to our partner Flash House and say, can you give us more? And they would say, no, we can't. And then we would go back to the seller and say, unfortunately, they 
can't help you accomplish your goal of where you want to be financially, let us focus on other strategies, right? You were, you were disarming yourself from being the bad guy by Correct. having this third party group saying, uh, hey, the offer's coming from these investors. The offer's not coming Correct. from this agent or this company. In, in, in the way I, we built Flash House was we had pricing analysts that were completely emotionally detached from the outcome, right? And so they would use technology to identify what their value was. They would spit out a preliminary offer. And we started to see some traction since 2020 when we built Flash House. We received about 5,500 offer requests going direct to consumer, okay? Now, in Northeast Ohio, is like Cleveland, Akron, Canton, not the biggest place in the world, but that's a lot of volume. Here's where this whole story starts to kind of so, take so let's, shape. Let, let's pause for a moment. You figured out a technology that got you 5,500 seller leads. Yeah. That's, that's so big. Oh my gosh. It's so yeah. big. I'm it's so big. And it's, hot it's bothered here. Keep going. So here's where it gets, here's where you get very hot and bothered is less than 2% of the people that requested an instant offer sold their home to flash house. All right. Yet. Almost 40% of those people went to market within 12 months. All right. So and we track every single opportunity that comes through our funnel. You know, we see when it was listed, what we offered, what they end up listing it for. Some of the interesting things are some of the properties that we offered on, they actually listed for less than what we offered them. Or really? yeah, and it was very interesting because you know, it's one of those things that it's like a lot of people when they request that offer, they're not quite ready to sell yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even if the offer was there, maybe the market changed, maybe whatever, whatever circumstances, some of them, you know, we kind of looked at it. We we're trying to figure out why are they passing on these opportunities? Well, here was where the other light bulb went over. A lot of people are passing on the opportunities because they didn't trust the iBuyer, but they trusted their agent. Right. And so, so let, yeah. let's, let's pause again. Uh, the iBuyer you're talking about is Zillow, Open Door, Open Door Pad, Offer these, Pad. Yep. these Wall Street run companies that people feel not warm about, right? We as realtors don't necessarily feel warm about them, but the consumer has that same feel and vibe is, is how would this person know my house, my market, my situation? Correct. And you put that you're you're putting that in the hands of the agents because I, I look at the list of who's uh, in the room right now and there's some people who are leading teams there's solo agents um how do they maintain that personal piece right i keep going with what you're going but i just well, i need to pause and understand how all this comes to be so we know two percent of instant offer requests that flash house received direct to consumer um we we of the 5,500, we acquired less than 2%. We also know that almost 40% of them went to market within 12 months. Here's the other statistic that just kind of ties the whole fellow and how this whole thing came together. 90% of real estate transactions um, last year happened with a realtor involved, right? So kind of, if you start thinking about it, it's like, wait, you've got a lot of people that are requesting instant offers. They're searching for their home value. Then the next step further is they're requesting instant offers to see what it looks like. Yet 2% accept the offer, 40% go to market in 12 months with over 90% of their agents, right? Mm -hmm. What's interesting is a lot of people that are requesting the instant offer weren't telling their agents that they were requesting instant offers. And so what we found was we were building this very large funnel and ecosystem of these potential sellers, right? These predictive sellers mm -hmm. that essentially weren't reaching out to their agent. And so all of a sudden the light bulb went off of, wait, the young team and Flash House were working really well together. We're seeing how these people, these prospects, these consumers are starting their search or starting their, their selling journey with this instant offer. Why don't we take all of this data and combine it all together and say, let's create a platform and a program essentially for agents where we empower them with the technology to be able to start building this massive seller funnel, right? We start at one step higher than the instant offer with the home value, but you can do the home value. You don't have to offer an instant offer. It's just that USP that we choose to offer. We have agents on the fellow platform that choose different USPs, call to action, stuff like that. 
But what we found was we really provide and we create this white label technology that's customized to every agent where it doesn't feel like it's our technology, but it feels like it's your own proprietary technology. You know, Hatch is killing it with it right now. And what we're really doing is we're helping these agents build these massive seller funnels. And it's really interesting to see now that we launched in October and we're working with the best of the best in the business. It's really interesting to see the traction that we're seeing when people are actually focusing on seller lead generation and how to drive people into this funnel and continue to incubate them. Remember, almost 40%, it takes about 12 months for them to become a listing. Not every one of them is high intent. Not everyone is low intent. We see, you know, the more leads you drive, you're going to see things all over the place. But it's really interesting to see how a lot of the agents that we're working with are now shifting their mindset to what used to be PPC buyer leads, Zillow, Realtor.com, you know, whatever it is, spending all this money for these massive quantity of buyer leads that are very low conversion to now changing their mindset of how do we drive massive amount of seller leads into a funnel? And then how can we continue to incubate them? Now, Fellow provides some automation and some tactics and strategies to help incubate them until they're ready. But it just changes the way a lot of our clients are approaching their business. And it's changed the way the young teams run their business. We've gone all in on seller lead generation versus chasing one, two, three percent conversion, buyer leads, pay per click, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're you're redefining how your team does business, but I think that, that I think that there's some questions out there. Uh, Scott here in the chat says, "How is Fellow different from something like Z Buyer?" Yeah, so Fellow, and I'm not. I did a demo of Z Buyer maybe like six months ago. So uh, Z Buyer, uh, from my understanding, is selling uh, people seller leads, right? Fellow does not sell leads to teams. A fellow is basically a white labeled product that is completely customized to teams, to whatever your brand is. We create, we do it through three different strategies. We create basically customized widgets, personalized URLs, QR codes, landing pages for your team. You can build them as many as you want. They'll sit on your website. They'll sit behind your CRM. Fellow is completely behind everything that your team is currently doing. We, we've we really optimized journeys and optimized conversion on driving seller leads into your funnel. The second thing we do is we take all of your buyer leads in real time and we sync them over to our platform. We enrich their data looking for their address and auto enroll them in home value campaigns and instant offer campaigns and different unique call to action campaigns. Mm -hmm. The third thing we do is we take all your existing leads, your old pond leads, your dead leads, your stale leads, we dump all of those into the, a home value and instant offer campaign. And we've seen like crazy amount of engagement through that. So with fellow, you're not buying leads. You're just basically leveraging. We built a platform that basically like resuscitates your old leads and creates higher conversion on the current lead generation you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, that's really well articulated. So full transparency, my team, we have over 100,000 leads. I don't need another lead. I, I want to be really clear with you. And this is this is not about fellow. This is about everything. Most of you don't need more leads. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you just need to have better engagement with your leads. Uh, I know HomeBot is another option, Ryan, uh, that people may consider. Uh, do you think that's a good place to incubate these type of seller leads? So really quick, I'm looking. Here's the cool thing. You guys have 100,000 leads. I'm just looking at your account. Uh, you only have 22,000 enrolled right now, right? Of those 100,000 you have in your database. In the past 30 days, you've had 110 seller leads of the 22,000 that you have enrolled, right? Now, some of those are lower intent. Some of those are higher intent. So, like so let, let's, I, I want to make sure people understand the enrolled means the, the leads that we've actually given over to fellow. So we, yeah. we've given you a portion of it, but we're not trying to turn it all on at once to just drown. Right. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, if you five X the, uh, if you five X the amount of contacts, you probably five X the amount of leads you're driving, you're seeing a hundred plus seller leads in the last 30 days it becomes over, you know, it, it, it becomes a little bit overwhelming. Um, there, which is a good problem. Some teams are just turn the gas on people are kind of pacing through it, but you asked a question about HomeBot. So, um, my teams use HomeBot for a while. Uh, we, we used to use HomeBot. Um, 
I really think HomeBot is a phenomenal product. I think that HomeBot is a very informative product um, that it gets very granular information, especially more on the mortgage side that I find is fascinating. However, the challenge that I had with HomeBot for my team was it didn't drive us really any leads, you know? And so like we had our clients on HomeBot, but it was just like, you know, they were viewing it, but it didn't turn into opportunities. We have built fellow with the mindset of how do we turn these opportunities? How do we turn what's already existing that my team gave up on? And how do we actually turn them into opportunities? And it's more of a kind of, I'd almost say more of a spray and pray approach of like HomeBot's a little bit more surgical on the people we would put on there versus fellow. We're just every month, more opportunities keep driving in there and we just keep turning them over to create more sellers. Uh, yeah, uh, well stated. Uh, there's a few questions coming in. So I'm going to try to start uh, pointing sure. them to you. Don't feel like you need to read them. I got you, baby. Yeah. Uh, so let's say one of the people watching right here is interested in trying to re-engage and, and to use a USP, uh, but they don't have the resources to actually buy that person's house, right? Yep. Uh, should they be offering an instant offer or should they be using something like fellow or uh, is a different route the better option? Yeah. So what I, I would love to do is take this conversation um, to the majority of recommendations that I'm going to make, you don't have to use fellow in order to, uh, to, to launch these type of um, ideas, theories, stuff like that. You don't offer an instant offer and you don't have the resources to do so. Let me tell you a way that I've historically done this before I had the resources. Um, in Cleveland, in Northeast Ohio, uh, on our MLS, you can search transactions that were acquired for cash. That was finance. When you look at finance, you can search, check off cash, right? So one of the ways I um, encourage my team to look for potential investors or buyers of some of these instant offer opportunities is, let's go see the properties over the past 12 months that have closed for cash. Let's look up who owned those properties. If those properties are owned in an entity, right? We buy Cleveland Homes LLC, whatever the LLCs are, let's go look at that entity and see how many assets they own or how many properties they bought over the last 12 months. What we've done is we've started to build out this investor list of people that we know focus in different areas, right? And so we reach out to them and say, hey, I saw that you bought 17 houses in Lakewood over the past 12 months. If we had an instant offer or an opportunity for you to buy something in Lakewood off market, would you want us to send it your way, right? Now, here's what's really powerful about that is you start building this investor list. Well, now guess what happens to my buyer's agents or, you know, team that's working with buyers. When we have someone looking in Lakewood, we're calling them up and saying, Hey, we don't actually have a, an instant offer or someone that wants to sell their home, but I've got a buyer that wants to buy in Lakewood. And I know you still own those 17 properties. Would you consider selling one of them? And you start creating this almost like internal marketplace, right? Where you start becoming very active in the investor community. We've done a lot of off-market deals with investors and putting these investors together to stand behind us, right? To say, if I can channel you instant offer opportunities, what would you want? What would you be interested in? What do you normally offer from, a, you know, call it a, uh, your offer to value percentage, right? What do you like multifamily? Do you like single family? Do you like fixer uppers? Are you looking for long-term holds? And you start to build what we call kind of like this buy box for each of them. And then when you get an opportunity, you go to the criteria or your partners and you say, these three are like this type of property. And so you start moving them to the investors and you're just a pass through. Mm -hmm. uh, being that connector is one of the things that the future realtors uh, will be will be winning the game with is if you're the extension cord, you don't need to have any of the power, but you need to connect the two things together. And I, I think of it like this. Somebody right now is asking, you know, how, how can a new agent uh, that's a solo agent, not on a team, how can they leverage this technology to ramp up lead gen and work their sphere? Uh, I, I'd love your perspective on that, Ryan. How a solo agent can use it? Yeah. The, here's the, the best part about it is, so we've kind of built, originally we built Fellow with the intention of like mega teams that all provide instant offers. Since then, what's interesting is we found that a lot of people just liked it from the seller lead generation standpoint. 
So a solo agent, we essentially provide the tools and resources. You don't have to offer an instant offer, but you can just leverage all the landing pages, uh, unique URLs, QR codes. You can go and post on social media once a week, get your home value in seconds, right? Start building your database, driving them into this funnel, letting us help you incubate those opportunities into the funnel. We've really expanded, expanded and kind of like widened what the original intention of Fellow is supposed to be. Fellow is originally supposed to be an instant offer platform for agents. What's interesting is that most agents don't really care about the instant offer. They care about the lead gen that it drives from the instant offer. So once we started to realize that, we started taking steps back and saying, wait, how can we just make this a better seller lead gen platform versus an instant offer platform? Uh, you know, unintentionally, uh, we find ourselves in a series right now. And the series is, and I have, I have this uh, webinar today and in two weeks, I'll be back. Uh, Next time I'm back, uh, we're going to have a guy named Jesse Burrell who owns a company called Batch Leads. And they're this incredible company that a lot of wholesalers and investors are using. So they take property data and information that's out there and they can really activate it uh, for us. But we're the ones that have to work the plan because Ryan, I'm convinced of it right now. We are in uh, a a change in business where most people are trying to now, not intentionally, but they're renting their business. For sure. They're renting their business because they're relying on Zillow and Realtor.com and Dave Ramsey at a 35% referral uh, for you to all of a sudden find this. And we're excited because a deal is a deal is a deal, but we're right. leaving a third of our money on the table. And, and what fellow and what batch and what hatch are all saying to you is if you're going to stand the test of time in this industry, you can't rent your business. You have to own your business. You have to control uh, a lot of the messaging and the voice that's out there. What are your thoughts well, on all that, Ryan? Yeah, a hundred percent. I've um, to, to reiterate what you said, like 10 minutes ago, it's like, we don't need more leads, right? Most of the team's you know, that have been in the business, I'd say for the past five to 10 years that have continued to accelerate growth where we felt there was a pressure to continue to feed our existing agents. And I think I've gotten very comfortable moving to the principle, the principles in our organization of saying, I'm going to provide you with the tools and resources to help you fish, essentially. And I'm going to continue to invest into those type of opportunities which will help you build your skill sets, which will create more opportunities and you'll net significantly more money. It'll make our overall organization more profitable, which allows us to continue to reinvest in more things that help us grow. I got so sidetracked over the last, I'd say three years with Zillow Flex and uh, Homelight and all these other third-party sources. Cause I was looking at it like I can build my database for free and if I sell a house, sure, I'll, it's like a credit card theory. Like I can swipe it now, but I don't have to worry about it. Well, yeah. the challenge is when you start looking at the end of the year at the return on investment of different lead sources and you see what your customer acquisition cost is on that type of lead source versus something you build organically, it completely changes the economics of your business, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, spot on brother. Uh, a couple other questions coming in. Uh, what major platforms does fellow integrate with Sierra all Fub, chime, all of them, all of them. Yeah. Fellow, here's the cool thing about fellow is fellow completely is in the shadows. It completely sits behind it fully two way syncs within, uh, integrates with every CRM. So essentially every lead that hits your CRM automatically syncs with fellow. And then once it, something happens in fellow, it automatically syncs back into your platform. Uh, we have, I have learned, you know, once again, I'm also still in the trenches with the young team that it's really hard to hold your agents accountable or even ask them to manage their Zillow Flex platform, manage their, update their home light platform, update their CRM, update their multiple CRMs. If you have multiple CRMs, right? Like it gets to the point where it's like, let them sell, right? Like let salespeople sell. So what we did was we took a lot of the, the, the pain points that I've had as we built the young team um, and surrounding myself with other, you know, team leaders, entrepreneurs like uh, Hatch and all these other people. And we've kind of said, how can we build this so that this is not a pain point, that there's not more friction, that it's not 
more another platform for your agents to have to internalize. We kind of keep Bellow in the background as an engine, almost underneath the hood, incubating and just pushing opportunities to your CRO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is there's this interesting issue where sellers want top dollar all the time. Uh, at least based on where the news has gone in the last couple of years, the COVID accelerated market, that sort, uh, that sellers are craving and wanting top dollar. On the back end of that is an investor offer, or on the back end of it is fellow saying, this is what your home is worth today, or this is what an investor would pay for it. How do you bridge that gap? I think it's, here's the script, right? And I love scripts and dialogues. And I think it is always... Mr. or Mrs. Seller, what is most important to you? Speed or net dollars, right? And if it's speed or speed, convenience, and certainty, well, how much is that worth to you? And so I think if you're playing the game right, you have some investors that are maybe willing to pay a little bit more off market for a premium property, whether they're looking at it from a hold perspective, the ROI still makes sense. You also have some buyers or investors that are looking for a flip. So they probably need a little bit more margin there. And you kind of have everything within between from like the distressed property where they're going to offer the lowest all the way to retail, which is, you know, us going traditionally on the market. And when you can understand when a lot of sellers will say, well, I want to sell it as fast as possible, but also for the most amount of money, it's like, no, 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 you got to choose one. Like w which one is more important? And if they say net dollar, then it's like, all right, we can get rid of that bottom half of the investors and let's focus on maybe a couple retail investors plus market. And you just kind of look at it from a spectrum standpoint of like what is aligned with the seller's goals. And then you kind of choose where it best fits along that like 70 cents on the dollar all the way up to 85 cents on the dollar versus just retail net, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh Appreciate that answer. Uh, give me, uh, give me a rough idea of because right now people are saying, "All right, well, I hear fellow. It makes sense that I'm going to engage with my database. It makes sense that I'm going to try to procure seller leads, but at what cost? Can you walk us through some pricing strategies on what somebody should be spending if they want to maximize this? Yeah, I mean, here's the cool thing: fellow is just a platform fee, right? So it's like. I, like my team, we don't you we don't do we do some pay per click on the buyer side. We actually just paused it because we're kind of at a mindset of like we just we already have enough opportunities. Um, I would say eighty percent of the people on Fellow don't spend any additional money trying to drive seller leads. This is what they're doing is they're they're plugging Fellow into their system, their their website, their CRM and seeing how many opportunities they can drive out of what they already have before they start spending more to drive more on the top, right? Yeah. One of the things that I do like about the buyer pay-per-click um, is, and I would recommend whether you use Fellow or not, you have to take this philosophy to every single buyer lead you receive. Every single buyer opportunity that comes into your funnel ultimately lives in a house somewhere, right? Now, the next question is, do they live in a house within your serviceable area? And then do they own that current house? And one of the things that fellow just automated was, how do we just immediately, as soon as they hit your CRM, immediately turn them into a seller in your market and automate that process? Ryan, but what the so young friggin' smart, dude. It's one of the things that like, the young team used to do every single buyer lead. We use a third party company called Forewarn. We look them up on Forewarn. We find out their address. We see if they own that address when they bought that house. And then we start focusing on the, the, the mindset is if someone's looking for a house, whether it's on Zillow, Realtor.com, your website, pay-per-click, whatever it is, and they own their current house, what do you think is the probability that that house is going to come on the market in the next 12 months, right? Like, they're actively looking for homes. And especially in the market that we're in right now, most people look to buy before they sell because selling isn't really a pain point. So you're going to find a lot of seller opportunities in the buyer leads. You don't need fellow, right? Fellow just automates that process. You could, every buyer lead, just do what we used to do. And that's kind of where the, the, the logic behind it came from. You got to find out where they live. When you when your buyer agents, we created an SOP for our agents. Every time a new buyer lead comes in, 
They need to look up where they live and they need to study the market that they live in, not just focusing on the market that the house they're looking to buy is. Because when we meet them for the driveway consultation or when we talk to them on the phone, it's, hey, out of curiosity, do you live in the area? Oh, you live in Stowe. Stowe's a great community. Where in Stowe do you live? Now we already know where they live, right? Hey, by any chance, did you see the house that just sold down the street and multiple is the first day on market? If we're not if we're not prepared to have that conversation, having a yeah, seller great. conversation with a buyer, we're losing out on a huge opportunity. If, if they say I live in Stowe and we say, oh, that's nice. I've heard about that community. Do you think they're going to look at us as a true a true opportunity to become their listing agent? No, they're going to look at us as a door opener in the market that they're looking in. Huge, huge value add to my team when we started approaching at it is every buyer is a seller somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan, what's next for fellow? You've obviously, uh, you've broken some things as you've been building. You've learned some lessons along the way. You're now starting to get mass adoption from people. Uh, yeah. uh, I have seen fellow be a topic of conversation in almost every major real estate circle I'm in. And so what's next? Cool, for right? Yeah. It's wild. Um, here's what's next. Uh, we're working on a lot of intelligence fellow becoming a very intelligent platform. And I'll show you, and I'll kind of explain to you what I mean by that. Um, there is an incubation cycle or phase um, when it comes to seller leads. Uh, you know, like we said, 12 months is kind of that like searching for a home value, then requesting an instant offer, then actually transacting. What we have found is right now we have a very systematic, systematic approach to incubating seller leads, but it's not intelligent yet. Um, intelligent is based off of consumer behavior, based off of essentially lead scoring. So when the consumer starts to change their behaviors, how do we turn up or turn down the frequency, the message that goes to them? And how do we change the message that goes to them, right? Increase the strength of the USP, uh, stuff like that. So right now we're building a lot of intelligence behind it. It's not AI. It's not, it's, it's very like, it's, it's, it's very, when you think of like, what what Hatch did, Hatch Coaching did, which was so amazing, was they created a, a, a wide array of fully automated action plans in Sierra, right? What that did was that allowed you to get very granular with your messaging. If someone came in through Realtor.com, it would say, hey, I saw you just requested some more information about Realtor.com versus Zillow, so on and so forth, right? Well, that's one step to making it more intelligent. But the challenge is, if we only rely on our salespeople, and I know myself, I think you actually said this, so I'm some, somewhat paraphrasing what you said. The millions of dollars I have on post-it notes, right, um, in my garbage can below my desk, stuff like that. I am I'm really good salesperson when I'm in front of someone. I'm terrible at sticking with them for the long haul. Right. So what, what's happening with Fellow is right now we're driving so many opportunities for our agents, seller opportunities. I think what's going to happen is they're really going to struggle to stay in front of those opportunities for that 12, maybe 18 month life cycle. Mm -hmm. So we're really building a lot of intelligence internally to make sure that we're removing the salesperson or the human error out yeah. of it and making it a very intelligent way to incubate those opportunities without essentially the agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, more automation, uh, something that is responding and responding well uh, when messaging comes across something that plays the long game. Uh, I like your strategies, Ryan. Uh, we're going to yeah. run out of time here. Uh, I want to give you some final thoughts and final takeaways. Folks who are watching uh, this live right now, I put in the chat box here a chance for you to schedule a demo with fellow if you are interested. Uh, full transparency, it's a company I believe in mightily. Uh, I've chosen to invest with them. I've also chosen to have my team use them. And Ryan, what are the results that we have in the last week or two uh, of, of fellow taking just a portion of our database. We're not spending any other money. We're just leaning on our database. What what do those numbers look like? Last seven days, uh, we've sent out 11,000 emails. Uh, we've had about a 15% open rate. We've had 38 home value leads. We've had six callbacks, um, callback requests. Um, and then we've had uh, two seller cash offer leads. So in that seven days, that's from your existing. Now, here's the cool part is... The way Fellow works is we warm up your system, essentially. Um, in the way we, that sounds weird. Uh, there, <laughs> the, the, we can't just all of a sudden just blast 
every, your entire database. It takes a little bit of time to prime it and warm it up. And so we're just getting to the place where I'd say we're like in a fast jog. We'll probably be sprinting uh, with you guys by the end of the month. And so yeah. it's like, this is what we've seen in a very short period of time. Imagine when we're sprinting. And so it's, 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 it's really cool. Hmm. Uh, so give us some takeaways, some action things. Uh, if somebody's watching and they're not going to use fellow, they still need to, I think it clear on their USP. I think yep. you need to figure out how you're going after sellers. Uh, this doesn't solve it all. I'll tell you that, uh, this, this doesn't solve it all, but it does give you another, uh, tool in your toolbox. Yeah. And, and I'm going to make some recommendations on USPs for, uh, all levels of comfort, right? Uh, the more aggressive you want to take it, it's uh, I'll buy your house, uh, get a cash offer on your house, uh, sell now, move later. Uh, uh, like what you're doing with, uh, we'll, we'll give you money to repair your home, invest into your home essentially before you sell it. If you want to soften up the USP a little bit, let's do something that doesn't involve potentially risk, which is risk of money out of pocket, but it's your home sold in X amount of days or I'll sell it for free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, your home sold at X or I'll make up the difference um, where you get to participate in choosing what that number is. Uh, a little softer approach is your home sold in X amount of days or I'll buy it, which you can have buyers behind you. But you don't. it doesn't all just have to be like instant offer. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people that are starting to come up with very creative ways, very creative selling strategies and they're turning into companies. There's a company called Truehold that says, um, sell us your home and we'll let you rent it back, right? Like think of all these creative ways that they're trying, they're solving pain points. They're solving problems for sellers and they're turning them into their own companies. Yeah. 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 Uh, true hold, I actually think is a brilliant model because people say like, so I want to go, I, I want to go make another move, uh, but I got to sell my house and a contingent offer doesn't fly in most markets and, uh, yeah. I'm building, time. I'm building a new house, but I don't want to sell my house until it's done. What, how, when do I time it? How do I time it perfectly? I don't know when they're going to break ground. Well, that's a great resource. You have resources on the buy side, like Divi and rent to own and homeward and ribbon and knock where it's become a cash buyer. There's all kinds of creative USPs out there. It's just a matter of what you're comfortable with. Well, I know for certain, Ryan, the people who have the seller leads, the people who have the listings are going to win. Uh, Y'all, we should be looking to own our business, no longer rent our business. And so fellow gives us uh, options there. If not fellow, please do something. Stop relying on everybody else to give you your business and go get your unfair share. Yeah. Final thoughts, Ryan? Final thoughts are I uh, change the mindset of we've been so conditioned, myself included, we've been so conditioned over the past five years of spending more money on leads, getting sold more, you know, more leads, more leads, and we're burying our team with more leads. Get out of that mindset and get into the mindset of how do we convert the opportunities that we already have? And I still find myself struggling. I get positioned by these opportunities of a lifetime, right? Like we just opened up exclusivity in your market or whatever it is. And I kind of find myself like, Ooh, exclusivity. Like, and then I have to kind of smack myself and be like, focus on what we already have. Focus on the opportunities. You will see the customer acquisition costs will drive way down. Return on investment will drive way up and you'll actually be building You'll be you're doing yourself and your team a, a huge service by by focusing on that versus trying to just push more leads on them. And so I think seller leads all day long, and you will see this is just where the opportunity is, and it's creating it's just putting in our team in a very good place. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Uh, Hector had the question, and I actually think it's a great place to wrap. He said, "Where do you market for seller leads?" And I you market your database, you market buyers. Uh, the Here's, radio and TV, uh, and billboards are a very expensive medium and you can get, uh, you can get seller leads from that. I think you have all the seller leads you need. If you've been buying leads, you just got to get smarter with what you're doing with them. And here, and here's the just last piece I'll add to that. Uh, Hector, you could literally go on Facebook and post organically once a week. Uh, want to know how much your home is worth? shoot me a message or click this link fellow provides you links to drive them into journeys. But it's like, 
how are you leveraging just the, the organic tools that we have as realtors, right? You know, sit down at a Starbucks with a, uh, a sign that just says, ask me how much your free CMA re request, right? Like go door knock and say, would you like me to provide you a free CMA? Uh, think about how, uh, once again, it's, 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 it's work, it's laborious, but if you don't want to spend any money to drive them, people want your help. And it normally starts with how much is my home worth? And then if you can get them more serious with an instant offer or working them down the funnel, you'll be golden. Mm -hmm. uh, gang, if you don't know this stat, here's an important stat for you. And this is a text message I encourage everybody to send out to everybody in your database. No joke. Anybody you know that owns a home, it says, hey, Ryan, this market is bananas. And then you say, uh, the average home of the United States has appreciated 60% in the last five years. Do you want to know what your home is worth today? Done. Can I add, I, can I add one more on top of that really quick? Please. After they say, this is something we're seeing a lot of success with. After they say, yeah, I'd love to know what my home is worth. And you tell them what it's worth, et cetera. Uh, hey, Eric, if it made financial sense to sell your home off market, would you take a look at an offer? Mm -hmm. Right. And all we're doing is because we see a lot of home value leads come through fellow. And I think a lot of people just say, I was just curious what the value is. So we always flip it around and say, if you could sell your home off market and it made financial sense, would you want to take a look at an offer? And all of a sudden, you know, 50% of the people are like, I, I take a look at it and everything's for sale. Right. Yeah. Well, great. If you were going to sell, where would you go? Right. If you accepted that offer, where would you go? And you start moving them into that seller conversation, which I think is lost. I think we let people off the hook by just them saying, I was just curious. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to take it one step further to say, totally get it. But if there was an opportunity and it made financial sense. Would you want to look at an offer? And we've seen a lot of movement from that. That's really good. Uh, last question comes from my buddy, Mark. Uh, where does the home evaluation price come from, Ryan? What's up, Mark? Uh, there is. We, we have multiple AVMs and we have our own proprietary AVMs. We basically look at standard deviation of the further we deviate from the median of those AVMs, we do some overrides. Um, the cool thing about the fellow platform is the agent can uh, completely uh, manipulate the value to whatever they choose. So for example, we sometimes get, no matter how good an AVM is, you get a property on 10 acres, 50 acres, a 14,000 square foot house. It's just very hard for AVMs to generate a real value. The agent can completely go in and adjust that value and it sticks with where the uh, agent adjusts it moving forward. So it, allow, it creates an interactive experience for the um, agent and the consumer versus being stuck with what the AVM. Uh, really says. good. Really good. You sounded smart there, buddy. <laughs> no uh, idea what I'm talking about. I just surround <laughs> myself with smart people. Uh, gang, if you, uh, like what you hear and you want a demo, I put that in the chat box. If you're watching the recording of this, uh, just reach out to us at hatch coaching or go to highfellow.com. We'll get you rolling. Yeah, Ryan, just drop a uh, hatch's name. Uh, if you're, whether you're going through the link or not, just drop, uh, say your friends of hatch, um, and you'll be in good hands. Oh, I love it. Ryan, you're a good man. Uh, here's the sunscreen and ginger living. <laughs> I love it. Thanks everybody. Yeah, everybody. Be well.